Welcome back everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Perkins, a board certified OBGYN. So the question that we're going to answer today is, is it hard to get pregnant with PCOS? I'm so excited to dive into this. In this episode, we will learn about what is PCOS, what dysfunctions come with PCOS, and how ovulation works with PCOS, and some of my recommended tips for getting pregnant if you have PCOS. Join me. So to start today, let's talk about what is PCOS. In a previous video linked here, I spoke about how to know if you have PCOS, but today we're going to dive more into what happens with ovulation, with PCOS, and how to get pregnant if you happen to have this condition. PCOS is short for polycystic ovarian syndrome. There are many different diagnostic criteria for this, but in general, most people will have a combination of anovulation, which means that they have irregular menstrual cycles. People with this may have less than nine cycles per year, and in fact, they can go many months or even years without seeing their menstrual cycles. Secondly, they may have increased amounts of male hormones, in particular, testosterone. Now these male hormones are produced by different organs, some of which comes from the ovaries, but others come from another organ called the adrenal glands. This is a gland that sits right on top of your kidneys. Now, whenever you have an excessive amount of these hormones in your body, it creates an imbalance wherein your ovaries are not able to produce the correct amounts of female hormones, the estrogens, and progesterones that are really important with allowing your body to really function normally. The third thing is that on ultrasound, you may notice that you have polycystic ovaries. Now this criteria is not mandatory for the diagnosis of PCOS. So therefore, you can have increased male hormones, you can also have irregular menstrual cycles and have that diagnosis even though your ovaries are completely perfect. But now let's talk about what the ovaries of PCOS looks like and what's happening in this condition. Now, ovaries are supposed to be a certain size and at any point in a reproductive female's life, when an ultrasound is done, it should reflect having follicles or what are called cysts in your ovaries. The difference with someone with PCOS is that their eggs and follicles or cysts do not mature completely and don't ovulate. On ultrasound, you may notice that you have way more follicles and cysts present. Now these cysts are cysts within an ovary. I would like to show you two images that shows you the difference between a cyst on an ovary and a polycystic ovary. So the first one here is a cyst on an ovary. And what you see here is a large bubble that is on top of the ovary. That's a cyst. And that cyst is very common in reproductive females. In fact, a lot of times you may go to the emergency room for a different problem. Say you had abdominal pain and a CAT scan is done to try to evaluate where your pain is coming from. That CAT scan report may come back and say, you know what, in addition to all the other findings, you also have a cyst on your ovary. Now, if you are a young reproductive female, meaning you are between the age or the periods of puberty and menopause, and you see the cyst, this is probably a normal physiologic cyst, meaning that every time that you ovulate, you create a cyst that is functional and normal for your body processes to occur, and it's actually there because it should be there. That cyst typically goes away in a couple of weeks after ovulation has occurred. If you are pregnant, that cyst stays there and helps to produce hormones that supports a growing pregnancy until the pregnancy takes over. That is very different from polycystic ovaries. In this case, as you see in this image, within the ovary are many follicles and cysts. 
this number can be greater than 12. 12 is an important baseline because oftentimes as OBGYNs and other doctors in this spectrum, we are counting how many cysts are present at any given time. Those that count, that's also called antral follicle count or AFC. And that number also is a reflection of your ovarian reserve. If that number is less than 12 or like way less than 12 in each ovary, say two or three, it could be a reflection that the amount of eggs that you have left is low. If your levels are higher or your count is greater than 12 and measurements are really low, this could be a sign of polycystic ovaries. Now, let's talk about measurements and what's happening there. When your cysts and your follicles are growing, we can measure those. Fully matured follicles are somewhere between 18 and 28 millimeters in size. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, the follicles may maximally get to a size of nine millimeters. So when your body is not fully maturing these eggs, then they stack up and more and more eggs are being created in hopes that one will actually ovulate and actually go through with a normal process. While we're diving in so deep into PCOS today, if you're enjoying our conversation or have a comment because you've experienced PCOS yourself, please go ahead and drop your comment below. And I would appreciate it if you like and share and subscribe. Now let's talk about getting pregnant with PCOS. I can tell you first and foremost that you can absolutely, absolutely, do you hear me? Absolutely get pregnant with PCOS. I've had so many patients come to me and tell me that, you know, I got pregnant but I have PCOS and I was told that I can never get pregnant. That is not the case. People do ovulate with PCOS. However, that could be very random. So you might not know when the ovulation is going to occur. Some people with PCOS completely do not ovulate ever. I hope you're really enjoying this content. We have so much more to cover. I'd love for you to follow me over to part two so we can talk about this further.